If you've ever stood trackside and heard the rumble of a Dash 9, you've heard the 7FDL at work. It's the engine that powered GE from underdog to market leader, and it all started when Alco couldn't keep up. When Alco collapsed in the late 1960s, the diesel market was left with a dangerous void. Railroads needed strength, reliability, and staying power. General Electric stepped in with the 7FDL, an engine built to deliver all three. The 7FDL-16 quickly became the foundation of GE's locomotive success. From the groundbreaking U-25B to the Dash 9S that filled America's main lines by the 1990s, this engine was everywhere. It gave GE the momentum to rise from a junior partner to the dominant builder in North America. This is the story of the prime mover that carried GE to the top and ensured Alco would never return. For much of the early 20th century, Alco was a name that commanded respect. Their steam locomotives powered the biggest railroads in America, and the company was synonymous with strength. But as the industry shifted away from steam toward diesel, Alco's dominance began to unravel. Transitioning from one era to another is never easy, and for Alco, the move was especially painful. The trouble began with the 244 engine, introduced after World War II. On paper, it looked like a worthy contender, a powerful prime mover designed to compete head-to-head -head with EMD's proven 567. In practice, though, the 244 quickly gained a reputation for failures. Crankshaft problems, overheating, and cylinder issues plagued locomotives that were supposed to be leading Alco into the future. Railroads don't forgive unreliability. Repairs were costly, breakdowns disrupted operations, and by the early 1950s, patience had run thin. Alco tried to fix its reputation with the later 251 engine. It was stronger, more refined, and far more reliable than the 244. But the damage was already done. In the railroad industry, trust is currency, and once it's gone, it's nearly impossible to buy back. While Alco fought to recover, its competitors pressed forward. Meanwhile, General Electric, Alco's longtime partner in electrical systems, was quietly taking notes. GE had provided the traction motors and controls for many of Alco's diesels. That position gave them a front row seat to the problems that were holding Alco back. They learned what railroads needed most, consistency, reliability, and power they could depend on day after day. By the mid-1960s, Alco was weakened, EMD was dominant, and railroads were desperate for alternatives. That opening was all GE needed. In 1959, GE made its bold move into the locomotive market with the U-25B, the first road switcher built entirely under the GE name. At its heart was a brand new prime mover, the 7FDL, the engine that would carry GE's locomotive program for the next four decades. The name itself carried meaning. 7 marked its design lineage, while FDL stood for four cycle, direct injection, lean burn. In an era where most of GE's competitors, especially EMD, were deeply invested in the two-stroke cycle, GE's commitment to a four-stroke design was more than a technical choice. It was a statement of independence. It wasn't glamorous, but it was rugged and built with an eye toward the long haul. At the center of this family was the 7FDL-16. 16. 16 cylinders, four strokes, originally producing 2,500 horsepower. The engine was designed with expansion in mind, and over time, GE would comfortably push it above 4,000 horsepower without tearing up its basic architecture. Railroads appreciated this headroom, since it meant locomotives bought in the 1960s could be upgraded later rather than scrapped. The FDL block used a fabricated steel crankcase instead of a cast one, which gave it strength without unnecessary weight. Its modular construction meant that major components including cylinder heads, turbochargers, and injectors could be swapped quickly, cutting shop time dramatically compared with many earlier designs. For railroads, downtime was the enemy, and the 7FDL was built to keep locomotives in service, not parked in repair bays. Another forward-thinking move was its turbocharging system, designed to maximize airflow and fuel efficiency at all throttle positions. GE had been experimenting with turbochargers on smaller industrial engines for years, and the 7FDL was where that knowledge came together on a mainline scale. The U25B proved this wasn't mere theory. Here was a locomotive that stayed on the road longer, pulled harder, and cost less to maintain. And when railroads discovered that GE was listening closely to their concerns, simplifying access points, standardizing parts, and backing it all with strong field service, adoption grew fast. From there, GE doubled down, 
The 7FDL powered everything that followed, from the U-30s of the 1960s to the Dash 7s and Dash 8s that would become staples of American mainlines. What began in 1959 was the beginning of GE's rise to dominance in North American railroading. The 7FDL's reputation was built on reliability, adaptability, and rugged engineering at a time when the industry was starved for it. The four-stroke cycle set it apart. Yes, it required more moving parts than a two-stroke, but it delivered cleaner combustion, steadier performance at varying speeds, and longer life between overhauls. Railroads that had grown weary of Alco's temperamental 244 and even the quirks of EMD's engines quickly realized GE had engineered something that could keep grinding away with fewer interruptions. The direct fuel injection system was another advantage. Instead of relying on less efficient methods of mixing air and fuel, GE's injectors put the fuel precisely where it was needed. That meant better throttle response as well as fuel economy, but also lower smoke output, something crews noticed right away. The sight of a locomotive that didn't belch black exhaust under load was a sign GE had taken a different path. Scalability was also central. The 7FDL was offered in both 12 and 16 cylinder configurations, giving railroads a range of horsepower options without forcing them into completely different platforms. Smaller railroads could buy lighter 12 cylinder units for secondary lines, while the big carriers could harness the full 16 cylinder versions for heavy mainline freights. Either way, mechanics were working with the same core engine, cutting down on training and spare parts inventories. Another overlooked strength was its cooling and lubrication system design. GE engineers gave the FDL oversized radiators and robust oil circulation, allowing it to handle prolonged heavy loads in harsh climates. Whether pulling coal in the Rockies or intermodals across the desert, the engine was far less likely to overheat or suffer lubrication failures than many of its rivals. And finally, its sheer ruggedness. With a stout crankshaft, heavy-duty bearings, and a block built to handle high cylinder pressures, the 7FDL was built for punishment. This wasn't an engine that had to be babied. It thrived under long hauls, extreme weather, and the relentless pounding of freight service. It might not be revolutionary in appearance, but it was revolutionary in practice. The 7FDL delivered exactly what the industry needed. Dependability at scale. And that single trait became the cornerstone of GE's success as it wrestled dominance away from Alco and eventually from EMD itself. When GE unveiled the U25B in 1959, Few could have predicted how important it would become. Nicknamed the U-Boat, it was GE's first road switcher built entirely on its own. More importantly, it was the first locomotive to showcase what the 7FDL could do in real-world service. Railroads took notice. The U25B delivered reliable horsepower, it stayed out of the shop longer than many competitors, and when maintenance was required, it was straightforward. For managers balancing tight budgets and long freight schedules, that combination was hard to ignore. As the 1960s rolled forward, GE didn't stop at one model. The U25B was followed by a steady expansion of the line, the U30, U33, and U36. Each one carried an improved version of the 7FDL under the hood, and each one gave GE a stronger foothold in the market. With every delivery, GE proved it was here to compete with EMD on equal footing. Railroads responded. Many lines that had once been skeptical of GE began to buy in, especially as the U-Series demonstrated consistent performance across diverse conditions. Whether it was fast freights, coal drags, or mixed service, the U-Boats held their ground. Meanwhile, Alco was sliding into irrelevance. By the late 1960s, the company that had once been a titan of American locomotive building was struggling to survive. In 1969, Alco finally exited the locomotive business altogether, leaving the field wide open for GE to push further. The U-boats had done their job. They were proof of concept, proof that GE could design, build, and support mainline diesels at scale, proof that the 7FDL had the toughness to anchor an entire product line, and proof that the balance of power in North American railroading was shifting. By the 1970s, the once unthinkable was happening. GE was no longer an outsider. It was becoming a real contender for the top spot in American diesel power. 
By the 1970s, GE had established itself as more than just a competitor. The U-boats had proven that the 7FDL was dependable, and GE's next move was to refine and modernize. That refinement came in the form of the Dash 7 series. These locomotives introduced upgraded electronics, improved cooling systems, and incremental enhancements to the 7FDL prime mover. The Dash 7s weren't revolutionary, but they gave railroads a practical, evolutionary step forward, and that was exactly what the industry wanted. As the years went on, GE continued to evolve its designs. The Dash 8s of the 1980s marked another leap. With more advanced microprocessor controls and greater efficiency, these machines could handle longer trains, tougher grades, and more demanding service with fewer failures. Railroads noticed the difference, and the orders started piling up. Then came the Dash 9 series in the 1990s, and with it, the 7FDL-16 reached its peak. With up to 4,400 horsepower, the Dash 9 was a workhorse unlike anything seen before. Railroads across North America lined up to buy them in staggering numbers. Burlington Northern Santa Fe, Norfolk Southern CSX, and Union Pacific all placed massive orders. Suddenly, the sight of a Dash 9 leading a freight across the continent became part of the modern rail landscape. The success of the Dash 9 cemented GE's transformation from underdog to industry leader. By the mid-1990s, EMD's once unchallenged dominance was broken. GE locomotives were the standard. Railroads had come to trust GE's combination of rugged engineering, practical design, and responsive customer support. By the end of the 20th century, the 7FDL had powered GE to the very top of the locomotive world. As the new millennium began, railroads faced a different challenge. Stricter environmental regulations were taking effect, and locomotives that once ran without scrutiny now had to meet tougher standards for pollution and efficiency. GE's answer was the Evolution Series, anchored by the GEVO 12 engine. Introduced in the early 2000s, this was a new prime mover designed from the ground up to meet Tier 2 emissions requirements, while still delivering the pulling power railroads demanded. With 12 cylinders instead of 16, the GEVO used advanced turbocharging, electronic fuel injection, and sophisticated controls to produce up to 4,400 horsepower, all while burning less fuel and producing fewer emissions. This was a turning point. The GIVO 12 represented compliance with regulations as well as a continuation of the philosophy that had made the 7FDL so successful, practical, reliable, and scalable engineering. Railroads didn't have to sacrifice performance to meet new environmental standards. GE had found a way to give them both. Meanwhile, the 7FDL family didn't vanish overnight. Dash 9S and other FDL-powered locomotives remained in service for decades, and many still run today. But gradually, the GEVO series became the new face of GE's dominance. Railroads bought them in the thousands, making the Evolution Series the most widely adopted freight locomotive line of the 21st century. Yet the legacy of the FDL lived on. The GAVO was built on decades of lessons learned from the FDL's strengths and even its weaknesses. The FDL had carried GE from outsider to market leader. The GAVO kept that momentum alive, proving that GE could adapt to changing times without losing sight of what railroads valued most, reliability, efficiency, and trust. The 7FDL may have passed the torch, but its influence was everywhere in the locomotives that came after it. The legacy of the GE 7FDL is measured in both numbers and memories. More than 10,000 of these engines were built, and their footprints stretched across every major railroad in North America. For decades, they powered everything from heavy coal drags to high-priority intermodals. And even today, many remain in service, some still on Class 1 railroads, others on short lines and in industrial use. What set the 7FDL apart was its power, toughness, and staying power. Railroads trusted these engines to keep running day in and day out, often with minimal downtime and straightforward maintenance. Crews knew them, mechanics respected them, and railroads relied on them to move the freight that kept America's economy alive. Among rail fans, the 7FDL has a special place. Its deep, distinctive exhaust note and steady rhythm became the soundtrack of modern railroading in the late 20th century. Whether it was a U-25 clattering out of a yard in the 1960s or a Dash 9 thundering across the prairie in the 1990s, the sound was unmistakable. For many, it's the sound of their childhood trackside memories. And for others, it's a reminder of how GE cemented itself at the top. The 7FDL was an engine that outlived Alco. It was the engine that carried GE from a supporting role into the position of industry leader. 
Its success reshaped American railroading and redefined what railroads expected from their locomotives. In the story of diesel power, the 7FDL became the defining chapter. Alco had history and prestige, but history doesn't move freight. When the company stumbled with unreliable designs, it created an opening. GE stepped into that gap with the 7FDL, proving itself not through promises, but through durability, service, and relentless consistency. But you probably know all this, especially if you've ever stood trackside and felt the thunder of a GE-9. Now, to all the engine and locomotive fanatics out there, it's your job to let us know in the comments below if we missed something. And while you're at it, like, share, and subscribe for more insights into the machines that defined American railroading. After all, that's how we'll keep their story alive.